Welcome back to the customer driven healthcare, so called personalized health insurance segment. This is Consumers Doctor on the behalf of foremost organizations. My job is to educate the public. As a physician, I've had a lot of um, I've been in the healthcare industry for the last 40 years, so I know exactly how, what are the facts and what are the lies and deceptions. As an American, you, you need to know the facts. You need to know what is right for your health, for your needs. My job is to put the issues up front and you need to decide what is the fact and what is a, you know what is a lie and what is a deception so today let's talk about lies and deceptions in especially in healthcare i want you guys to need to know that that's the heading lies and deception in healthcare. As you know, in healthcare, most of the forces are, work are working against Americans. That is a fact. They're against Americans. And more importantly, you need to know what you can do about it. That's what my goal is as a consumer's doctor, to explain to you what you can do about it. I want to cut out through the dishonesty of politicians and insurance companies, folks. I really do. For many years, for many years, they delayed discussing solutions with endless debate, endless debate. Is insurance a right or a privilege? Yeah, is insurance is a right or a privilege? Is healthcare is a right or a privilege? Quite honestly, I don't care. It is just a distraction, folks. It's just a distraction. You and I are practical. You and I are practical. You and I need health insurance to access the health care. There's no doubt about it. We all need health insurance to access the health care. You and I need affordable insurance for wellness, early intervention, and prevention. Yes, and prevention. Our families need insurance as a protection against potential hospital stays that could bankrupt us, that could literally bankrupt the families. That is what's going on. There are so many bankruptcies because Healthcare costs keep rising. Premiums keep going up. Folks, we have a dysfunctional healthcare system. We all know that. We all know that. In spite of spending $3.7 trillion, we rank 37th. And we're spending 17.8% of the GDP We are still not getting the best health care what we need. American deserve. We are not getting it. When we ask a politician, they say, oh, we need a national conversation on health care reform. The national conversation. That's how it looks like President Biden seems to have been elected because a lot of folks believe 
we need a change. I, I believe in American voters force. I have no arguments with it. But you need to know the lies and deception when it comes to healthcare. When politicians, they raise these issues, it's really they're, they're asking, they're rusing for fundraising so that you will get another letter asking for money. You see, once they know you have an interest in health reform, they'll use that topic to solicit more contributions, more contributions. Whereas insurance executives say, when you ask insurance executives, really, when they ask them, you know what their answer is? Oh, we are listening to the customers. We are listening to the customer, our customers. Right. When was the last time you spoke to an insurance CEO? They, they, are, they stay isolated in their large home office buildings with guards and security courts to keep people like you and me away. That's what that is. That's what they do. Just try sometime. Try to talk to an insurance executive and what kind of hurdles you go through because they seem to say, oh, they listen, they listen, listen to the consumer demands. So does that mean we are helpless? Does that mean we are helpless because you cannot reach an insurance executive? Politicians, they keep asking for more contributions. They, they are, you know, this is the same thing goes around every time there's an election. When they know you're interested in healthcare, they want more contributions. And insurance executives answer is, oh, we are listening to the consumer demands. You know that's not true. So are we helpless? We may be subject to the whims of the powerful elected and unelected officials and a dysfunctional insurance system. But believe me, we are not helpless. We are not helpless. I bet you, you're not helpless. So how do we work together to get what we want rather than what some politicians and insurance companies think we need? How do we work together? I'll give you the answer. Here is how we win. Here is how we win. The real solutions will help you and your family. But nobody wants to talk about them. Real solutions. Nobody wants to talk about them. Most solutions that help you work against your interests. Interests of the insurance lobbyists in healthcare and Political is established. They work against you. First, first, very first, you need to know what are they keeping the secrets from you? You Americans, yes. What is it? You know, the knowledge, knowledge we gain from this technology and information. Information is power, folks. Information. Nowadays, with you know, this media is so biased, we can't even trust the media. But media, what we have on your mobile phones is power. Once you have the knowledge and the information, you can use two most powerful weapons. Yes. 
you can use most two powerful weapons. Your voice, like me talking, and your vote, you voting. So whom are we, whom are we putting in Washington? How can you leverage that into an action? Trust me, an informed and angry voter gets a politician's attention. Trust me. As an American, we always believed in freedom and health care. You know what? Informed and committed voters scares the pants off them. Yes, politicians. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought that voting is a waste of time? Have you ever thought? That's what many of you want them want you to think. Without public voting, the lobbyists with their political contributions become a more powerful voice, folks. Because contributions from these lobbyists are the one they are influenced by. But you are the one who is voting. So you are a major factor, folks. As a voter, you have a major factor. If you ever think that one vote will never change the world, have you ever thought that one vote will never change the world? Folks, you're wrong. You're wrong. Look at the fight we are facing in senatorial race. That is going to make a big difference if Democrats control the Senate or Republicans control. We need to have checks and balances, folks. That's what we need. That's where the Americans win when you have checks and balances. In 2010, Obamacare, so-called Obamacare, was passed by one vote, folks, just one vote. That too from a dead person. Yes, a dead person, yes. Senator Ted Kennedy died after becoming a part of Senate 60 vote. Filibuster proof resulted in approval of Obamacare. Approval of Obamacare. That's what happened. But Senator Kennedy was replaced by Senator Scott Brown. who ran in opposition to Obamacare. But the House of Representatives used a political trick to avoid a Senate revote. So we did get Obamacare by the margin of dead man's vote. That's how we got stuck. But what happened after the Obamacare passed, it punished the people who have had private insurance because the premiums kept going up. And, you know, the reason why the Obamacare came in is because of the uninsured, 27 million uninsured. But what I can figure out, why can't they focus only on the uninsured rather than punishing all Americans so they want to control the entire 320 million folks under one umbrella, one size fits all? I just can't imagine that is ever happening. So what happens now with 
senatorial race hanging in the balance. If the Democrats control the Senate, well, we will have one size fits all government mandated health care. But Democrats themselves are not united, folks. Democrats want public private partnership. They see the benefits of public. Public private partnership doesn't cost a penny to Washington, doesn't cost anything. So public private partnership where Americans need to decide how to have this personalized health care. So when you talk about a vote, one vote can change the world, folks. Think back again in 2000, George W. Bush won the presidency by 547 hanging, hanging chats in Florida and a five to four Supreme Court decision on how to count these votes, folks. This is what happened. So the votes matter. Even in 2016, Donald Trump won presidency by winning several states by only a few thousand votes. So the votes matter, folks. Votes do matter. So we really need to focus our attention to what we want. Passage of the laws can force you to buy only government control health insurance. If you pass a law, then you have to buy government-controlled health insurance. They can force you to pay insurance you don't need and you don't want. They can force you. But Obamacare is based on premiums only, premiums only. That's, it's like a risk pooling the entire country. So you will be paying for somebody else high blood pressure. You will be paying for somebody else hypertension. You will be paying for somebody else health problems. This is our premium base. They're not segmented, folks. They're not. There is no risk segmentation in Obamacare. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about it. You will be paying for somebody else government mandated premium. So you'll be your premiums will be based on everybody else health. That's that's scary. That is really scary because there is no risk segmentation in the insurance. They're not categorizing to well category or at risk category or chronic illness. They're not categorizing. If you ask, ask any actuarial, does it make sense to have one size fits all government subsidized health care without segmenting the risks? Our health care costs will rise if continue to rise because we are not addressing the primary problem. Why is this health insurance? But health cost keeps rising. We are not addressing that. So they can, from Washington, they can force you to buy insurance you don't want, you don't need, and they can increase your taxes and add penalties for non-compliance. This is a mandate, folks. It is. This is not. This is a mandate from Congress. They can force you to do that. then you might say you hate politics. The thing is, you probably hate is not politics, but the intrusive effects of coercive politics. That's what it is. Coercive politics, folks. Coercive politics. And you know what? All this time, all these years, You'll be surprised. 
American consumers have been ignored all this time. They have been ignored for too long. Too long. Consumers. If you have American consumers were never involved in the, the entire process. Ideally, healthcare consensus, healthcare consensus in the country need to balance the consumers and the stakeholders. Consumers and the stakeholders, folks. Consumers were never even came to the forefront. Consumer, American consumers have never been in the forefront of healthcare. So you might ask me, who are the stakeholders? Who are the stakeholders? Number one, consumers. He's, they're, the, they're the major force, folks. When it comes to consumers, you have to address pre-existing conditions, increase choice, improve quality, lower premiums, and competition, affordability. Consumers, they demand coverage for pre-existing coverage, com coverage for free, freedom to choose the doctor, choose the facility. And they want affordability. That's the consumer's demand, folks. And they've been ignored all this time. All this time. Who is the next stakeholder? Who are the next stakeholders? Uninsured. Yes, uninsured. Uninsured have been ignored. And they wanted guaranteed access to an affordable coverage. People who have no insurance, the reason why they have no insurance is because they could not afford it. They are the stakeholders too. I will look at it that way. They are this uninsured are the stakeholders. They are very important stakeholders as a matter of fact. When you think, take the entire healthcare industry, that has been, that is the one we, we got this Affordable Care Act because of the uninsured. So they are the major stakeholders. Who are the other stakeholders in line? Are the hospitals. Hospitals provide the uncompensated care. Hospitals are forced to provide. It's called Imtala, Imtala law, where if a person who's uninsured goes to the emergency room, they have no other choice, but they have to provide the care. This is where the hospitals are losing money because they are providing the uncompensated care, especially with this COVID, this uncompensated care. Hospitals are in a lot of stress because of the uncompensated care. So hospitals are the stakeholders too. But whose fault it is? It's the government's fault where they, they did not address the uninsured. They should. It is the government's, but they're forcing the hospitals to take care of them because governments failed to respond to the uninsured. They didn't address the uninsured. So basically they are regulating from Washington on these hospitals to take care of these uncompensated care, uncompensated care folks. And it's stressing the hospitals. And who are in the, who are the other stakeholders? Major stakeholders. Doctors. Yes, doctors. Doctors want pot reform and less defensive medicine because they are being sued left and right. They need thought reform and their insurance premiums, malpractice insurance premiums keep going up and the cost of the care going up and cost of defensive medicine keeps going up. That is 
the doctors are the major stakeholders in this and they need the most is the court reform and you cannot put jury the way the jury awards are based on emotions you can't do that in healthcare it has to be fact based awards and it has to the jury should be made of healthcare professional folks you cannot have you cannot have non professional health personnel on the jury you need to have professionals sitting on the jury deciding basing on the awards are based in, on the facts not emotions that's where our problems are the cost of defensive medicine in america keeps rising because we have not addressed the tort reform who are the next major stakeholders don't be surprised are the insurers we want we yes we want insurance for our health care we want to finance for the health care how do we we really desperately need insurers insurers are the major stakeholders but we want a stabilized private insurance market where customers need to be in the driver seat where customer demands are met customer demands lower premiums yes customer demands lower premiums free to choose the doctor free to choose the hospital and they demand customer demands full transparency in healthcare like any other insurance folks you know you have an auto insurance you have a house insurance why can't healthcare be the same where customers can choose what they need if they need catastrophic for a limited time they should be able to buy a catastrophic coverage they should be able to buy an at risk coverage they should be able to buy the premiums have to be based on if you're in well category your at risk category or you are in a chronic only 15% of the americans have chronic illnesses folks 15% their claims are 48% that's what is killing that's where the exorbitant that's where the hospitals have no other option to raise and collect it from the private insurance what they are doing is everybody is passing the buck passing the government is passing the buck on the hospitals and doctors and hospitals and doctors are passing the buck on the insurance companies and insurance companies keeps raising the premiums everybody is passing the buck they don't want to address and hospitals healthcare industry is so over regulated company look at the groceries look at the food industry how well it's established what happened to the healthcare why how have we reached healthcare to this level they are over regulated and overburdened some to the healthcare professionals hospitals is destroying it's dysfunctional that's one of the reasons why the healthcare is so over regulated that's one of the reasons the costs are going up because they're regulated you know regulated you can't even breathe hospitals can't breathe doctors can't breathe why can't we follow the example what we have done to the groceries and food chains they are no different give them the tools what consumers and put the consumers in the driver they are the only one who can lower the cost in healthcare folks nobody you need that the government nor the medicare nor none there is no other option folks only through the public private part and may, most of the democrats believe in public private part and what the heck is medicare for all when medicare itself is not solvent that's what i don't get it how did they dare to say oh medicare for all when medicare itself is going broke because of the poor management it's like a us postal service 
mismanagement and they want medicare for all that's that's a bad idea folks i want you guys to take charge i want americans to take charge americans are the only one can lower the cost look, look at other sectors in retail industry and we have done so americans are good in the retail sector americans are good in delivering groceries and food chains why can't they do the same thing in the healthcare give the consumers what they need rather than passing too many laws from washington if you if president biden and his democrats are listening appoint a health review authority folks health review authority health review authority doesn't cost a penny to the washington health review authority will take care of the uninsured health review authority will take care of everyone it is a public private partnership it doesn't cost it doesn't stress the american economy it will liberate the americans from the healthcare issues whatever this dysfunctional healthcare this billing system it is totally fraud folks billing system the cpt drj codes they and hospital charges they are all made up numbers folks they're not consumer demands they're not consumer demands consumer knows how much to pay they can if you give them the tools what they need you need information as i said information is nowadays this telemedicine telehealth robotics automation artificially believe me folks technology is catching up and technology will take the leading role for americans to handle the healthcare because our government failed in and both the parties democrats and republicans both of them failed putting the consumers up front i blame the entire political establishment for not addressing the issues for americans what americans need affordability what americans need is healthcare they deserve the best they are not getting it and americans you guys need to decide do you want be told where to go how to where to get the medicine or do you want your choice this is where americans have to decide do you want to be you can't be like another welfare system folks you cannot have another welfare system look at what we have, where we are. and president clinton has done a tremendous job in reforming the welfare we cannot have another welfare debacle in healthcare we can't afford it what the political establishment need to decide is what is good for the americans they need a freedom they need freedom in healthcare and full transparency in drug prices full transparency in hospital costs procedures you name it and technology will help them choose the right way like what we have done in any other sector healthcare is at a tumultuous point where consumers and customers will be in the driver seat no matter what washington does because we have put money in we have invested into this so called health savings and deductible premiums lower premiums with the deduct these things we have already done we are half way through so let's continue and giving the tools for especially my focus is people who can't afford the insurance that's my that's my focus is on people who can't afford the premiums afford the health insurance that's where we need to focus our attention where health review authority will i have no doubt will do a good job by uh, having a public private partnership 
If you need further information on the Health Review Authority, please listen to the Health Review Authority segment and dis discuss in great detail. And also, please look into the risk fragmentation, folks, how the actuarial works. These insurance premiums are based on total risk. They're not segmented like normally it's supposed to be segmented. I have no idea how we have come this far without segmenting into well category, at risk category, chronic. We need that folks. We need to segment the risk so our premiums can be lower. Simple fact. I would like you guys to listen to the risk segmentation on Consumers Doctors channel. On the behalf of Foremost Organization, we love you. We would love to see the least I can do as a volunteer to the Foremost Organization educate you. That's all I can do. I can give you the bring the facts and ultimately you guys decide what is good for your pocketbook, your pocketbook and for your family. You need to decide what is good for your family, no matter what anybody says. Thank you. This is Consumer's Doctor. Love you. Salute. See you in the next episode.